We're here in the Chim Sa Choi area of Hong Kong, down by Victoria Harbour. And this is what they call the, I think it's the Avenue of Stars. I'm not 100% sure about that. We're going to find out in a minute though. But I think it's the Avenue of Stars. So all along here is where they have like the handprints of the celebrities, a little bit like you'd find on um, Hollywood Boulevard in the States. We're going to have a little walk around here. Check it out. Day one in Hong Kong. It's hot. It's humid. It's November, 30 degrees in November. I mean, come on. How can it be 30 degrees in November? The humidity is about 70, 80%. So yeah, I mean, you can really, really feel it. My God, the view here, it really, really is a beautiful city. It's just such a shame though, because one of the biggest problems with Hong Kong is it's basically always overcast. It's always cloudy. You never really get many blue sky days you don't get that clear bright sky <sighs> cloudy 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 night time's a little bit different at least at night time when it's all lit up <laughs> the cloud the the haze the fog it actually kind of works well with the lights because then the lights kind of um the haze the fog the mist kind of gets illuminated by all the neon lights on the buildings so even though at night time it's still a bit foggy and hazy and overcast, it actually kind of looks really cool. A little bit of trivia about Hong Kong. So Hong Kong, uh, the name actually translates to fragrant harbor. So that's right, Hong Kong basically means fragrant harbor, which is kind of funny because originally when it got its name, it was because Hong Kong was uh, very strong for the export of incense, especially um, a certain type of wood. There's a lot of the trees here as well, but um, called aga, aga wood. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but aga wood. Aga wood, yes, the king of the incense. What's interesting is though, when you think about that and you think about this place got its fragrant harbor, meaning a place that smells nice. What's funny is though, nowadays when you come here, you can still kind of go, okay, fragrant harbor. Yeah. But of course it doesn't quite smell like it used to smell. In fact, like all major harbors, big places like this, it kind of smells a bit. <laughs> oh, it's a bit fragrant. It smells rather fragrant, just in the other way. Just looking at the hands and of course, trying to see if there's anybody here that without being a fan of Asian cinema that you still may know. And you have here, This is Michelle Yao. Oh, Michelle Yao's got quite big hands. Michelle Yao, famous from Police Story, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Tomorrow Never Dies. Michelle Yao, legendary, legendary. Well, of course, I think what people would know her for now is as um, the Oscar winner for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Phenomenal, phenomenal Malaysian, uh, Malaysian Singaporean actress. I mean, I have to keep showing you the skyline. I don't care how many times you see this, even if you worked here, and this is something you have to look at on a nightly basis, you would never ever get tired of seeing this. It is spectacular, it is breathtaking, and it actually gives you the strangest feeling when you stand here. It really is empowering, it's positive. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like big cities, but for me this, I'm sorry, this is just beautiful. This building here, the tall one sticking up above the Hong Kong Convention Center, that's the Central Plaza building, the tall one there. And if you look over here, the building with the two prongs coming out, I'm not sure quite how well the camera's gonna pick this up, but the ones with the two prongs poking out, that's the Bank of China building, the large one over there is the finance uh, building. That's one of the, well, possibly the most recent building on that side. Well, I've just found somebody that I'm sure, again, I'm not 100% sure, but certainly my generation are gonna know. Look at this. Mr. Jet Li. And I, my hands are the same size as Jet Li's. In fact, 
I'm, 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 in a, I'm a bit confused here because my hands are the same size as everybody's hands here. So yeah, I have Chinese film star hands. I'm not sure that, what that says about the rest of me. But what's going on? Where does my hand fit perfectly in everyone's hands? This is, in all fairness, they're amazing martial artists and they'd kick my ass, so maybe it's not so bad. Maybe it's a cosmic thing. Maybe people who have this size hands are meant for better things. I feel like an episode of Seinfeld. Remember the episode of Seinfeld with the, when George is the hand model? That's me. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna go to a casting agent's today and I'll just walk in. They'll be like, no, 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 and I'll be like, oh, check out my hands. They'll be like, you, you big star. Woo, incredible. Can you believe it? I mean, we're here in Hong Kong. There's so much more I want to say, but I, I'm absolutely breathtaking. And I'm trying not to keep looking at the camera and talking because I actually want to take it all in as well. I want to appreciate it. There's, there's one thing filming being here but every so often i need to just take a breath and have a look and be like wow i mean seriously seriously wow it's a strange city because a lot of parts of Hong Kong are still very old, very, very old buildings. And a lot of those buildings are from the 1950s, 1940s. And you still feel like when you go further up, I mean, here is all fantastic. But when you go further in, again, we'll show some videos of those areas as well. But as you go further in, you start to really see how old the buildings are. When you're staying in accommodation here, if you're staying in Airbnbs or hostels, I mean, if you're in a hotel, it's five star, you know, it's, it's beyond heaven. But when you're staying in like Airbnbs or normal places, you really see how old the buildings are, how small they are. For those of you that don't know, there's a huge, huge problem in Hong Kong with real estate and property. Basically what happens here is, um, I think once or twice a year, they actually have an auction and they auction off plots of land to the highest bidder. And then the highest builder, bidder can build uh, new property developments on that area. But because it's only done like once or twice a year, and because it's so controlled and it's done via a bidding process, it gets hugely inflated, the price of land. Hugely inflated. Due to that fact, it is the most expensive real estate realty in the world, bar none. And another thing that's quite fascinating and this is something I saw only recently, and I hope I've got my facts right here. Um, but I was watching a documentary and they were saying that only 7%, 7% of Hong Kong land is utilized for housing and commercial buildings. 93% of the land here is just empty land. But because development is so heavily controlled here, what little land they do allow to be developed on it just becomes exorbitantly expensive, expensive, expensive. And it really is such a shame. For the generation now to be able to afford property, it's, it's an impossibility. I mean, for those of the people who bought property here, certainly back in the 80s, 90s, poof, you know, you're sitting on a lottery ticket now because it's worth so much money. This here is the famous Peninsula Hotel, an absolutely stunning hotel. And on the top floor up there is, uh, is this wonderful bar. And you sit up in that bar and you overlook the Hong Kong skyline. I don't remember the name of the bar now, but it used to be called a long time ago, because I have been in there. And a long, long time ago, I think it was called Felix Bar. I used to go up there. And in the men's toilets, you would pee, pee literally against the glass and look out across Hong Kong while having a, a whiz -waz. So yeah, that's the technical term for weeing on a city, is a whiz -waz. okay? 
You can Google it. I'm, I'm not making it up. I have to say though, one of the things I've really, really noticed uh, about Hong Kong, I got here yesterday. I jet lagged, needed to just walk around, try to get my bearings. One thing I've noticed is it's, it's actually very clean. I haven't really seen any litter or graffiti or, or anything. Everything is well maintained, very clean. It's kind of funny though, because I say it's very clean, but when you walk around the streets, you'll see there are not many trash um, there's bins. There's not many <laughs> trash bins on the roads. Like I know in a lot of cities, you've literally got them every like 20 meters, but here they're very few and far between. Like even while I've been walking around, if I'd had something on me that I need to throw away, there's nowhere to throw it away. And even regarding that, still, it's a very clean city. There's no litter, there's nothing on the floor. I've also noticed one thing here as well, is the traffic lights when you're crossing the road take forever. So when it's on red and you're waiting for your turn to cross, it goes on and on and on. And you literally stood there for ages before it turns green for, to cross. Um, and even when there's no cars, nobody crosses. Nobody dare cross until it's green. Like, I'm kind of like, okay, there's no cars. I know I shouldn't cross because it's red, but there's no cars, fine, I'm gonna cross. But no, no, no nobody crosses. And one thing I've noticed is I don't see anybody, and I mean anybody, smoking. And what's kind of crazy about that is, certainly in, in the Chinese, I'm stereotyping here a little bit, you know, uh, obviously they all, they all know Kung Fu and all know how to use a wok and they all um, smoke. So it's been really strange to see because smoking is a, from what I remember and what I recall, here smoking was always an integral part of society. I mean, it's like everybody smoked and it's weird walking around now, no? And it's nice. It's nice to walk around and not smoke. So, yeah, I, I found that a bit strange as well. Okay, anyway, so we're just walking a bit further up here. So basically, Victoria Harbour, where we started, and we started at the end of Victoria Harbour, where the Bruce Lee statue is. If you walk along the front, which is where we're walking now, we're going to head towards the Star Ferry. Of course, the famous Star Ferry, which takes you across to Wan Chai and Central. The Star Ferry, over the years, um, the government has tried many times to close it down, basically because it's not economically feasible, it doesn't bring in any money, and they've wanted to close it many, many times the government's tried to close down the ferry. But luckily, you know, public outcry has been known, no, it's part of our identity of Hong Kong, it's an important, um, um, it's important for tourism, which it really is. And thankfully, it's still been um, maintained it's still running every day and it still costs like virtually nothing. I think now, well, yeah, because yesterday I went on it quickly and I think I paid five Hong Kong dollars. So five Hong Kong dollars is, God, I'm not quite sure, 55 cents. I'm gonna put here, when I say a price, so five Hong Kong dollars and boom, there's the price. Or there, depending. It's one of those things that I'm, I, I think it's impossible to find a tourist who comes to Hong Kong and doesn't use the Star Ferry. I mean, there is nothing more iconic than crossing this glorious body of water at night time on the Star Ferry. I don't know, I know for people who live in Asia or in big cities, maybe this is just normal. For me, it, I just find it awe-inspiring. It just captivates me. And of course, one of the safest, if not the safest city in the world. I mean, let's not forget that. I mean, having an amazing city, a beautiful city with phenomenal amenities is one thing. But then on top of that, have it been possibly the safest place in the world? I mean, you can't go wrong with that, can you? Hong Kong has something that is quality in a cone. And that's these. So speaking as iconic as the Star Ferry is, these, you can see people are even taking pictures. You'll see these around Hong Kong. They're um, Mr. Whippy, softy ice cream trucks. It's 13 Hong Kong dollar for an ice cream. 
And again, when I lived here in the 1990s, I used to pay six Hong Kong dollars. So with inflation, 25 years later, they doubled in price. That's not bad. That's not bad. But these are the exact same trucks that I remember. These trucks have been like this for 30, 40, 50 years. They haven't changed, they're identical. And trust me, as soon as a tourist sees one of those things, they, they make a beeline for it. And when, not if, when you're in Hong Kong, you've got to try it. Okay, we're going to jump on the Star Ferry. I'll show you how it's done. It's super easy. Super, super easy to get the Star Ferry. We'll get the Star Ferry to Wan, Wan Chai. It doesn't matter. Hong Kong, everything's walkable. So even if you go somewhere where, like, it doesn't matter if I go to Central or to Wan Chai or to Admiralty, at the end of the day, everything's so close by. Um, the distance between the different locations is minimal. You can walk around it very, very easily. I mean, and of course, it's not even hilly. It's all, well, unless you're on the Hong Kong Island side and then you're up the island, then it does get hilly in an area called mid-levels. But anywhere else you are, especially on the Kowloon side, no, I mean, it's not hilly. You just walk, walk, discover. That's the base, best thing. Because when you walk around, you discover these really weird little things. When you're on public transport, you miss so much. Right, so we're going to jump on the ferry to Wan Chai and the convention center. So to get a ticket, go here, you push adult first. It's five Hong Kong dollars. So add your coins. And that's it. This, a token, an old school token. And that was that. That is how easy it is to get on the Star Ferry. Yeah, I mean, this is when everything takes on a whole new context. This is what, this is what sometimes life is all about. These moments. This is absolutely incredible. Again, at night time, really, really stunning at night time. These videos, there's definitely going to be one for the day, one for the night, because this is, it's a shame. Hong Kong is two cities. You have the daytime aspects of it, and then you have Hong Kong at night. And it literally is two different cities. For me, I always prefer the nighttime aspect of Hong Kong. But I don't know. As I'm getting older, I'm starting to enjoy the day more. It's funny seeing the convention center, um, the beetle shaped building just in Wan Chai. So when I originally moved to Hong Kong in the mid 90s, um, and I stayed here until 2001, I lived in a place called Chongqing Mansions. And in Chongqing, um, it was a, it's an old building um, full of hostels and cheap accommodation. A lot of the people who lived in the building were, and certainly the building I lived in, were foreigners coming to Hong Kong on the way to Australia, looking for work, looking for some extra money, um, just exploring the world. And a lot of the people in the hostel I lived at actually ended up working on the convention center, on the construction. And I have no idea how or why, because they weren't even construction workers. 
But I know a lot of the guys were doing roofing on the on the um, <laughs> on the building, which sounds like an absolutely insanely dangerous job, because of course here safety precautions are not. Oh, I mean, this is a country that still uses bamboo scaffolding. So how they did the roofing and climbing up on the top, and they would work seven days a week. Um, I think they made good money. What they would do is kind of save all their money, live in chunky mansions that was very cheap, drink cans of beer, and then eventually, I think, once most of them had enough money, they headed on from Hong Kong to Australia. And here's the convention center I was talking about. I remember it being so much bigger. I honestly, honestly do remember it being a lot bigger. A lot of times you need to put down the camera, put down the phone, just look, be in the moment, be in the present, and really, really marvel. Because it is, this is a marvelous, marvelous city. And now, as you can see behind me, it's Wan Chai. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're going to end this video here. There's plenty more videos in Hong Kong to come. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you so very, 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 very much. Take care and until the next video, I'm going to continue exploring Hong Kong. You enjoy, be good. Bye bye.